So I have the rear cover off of the micro squirt. And this is the amped version, which I believe means they put Amp BFI took this and upgraded the injector drivers. Um, it's really not necessary, but it's nice to have the capacity. Uh, what's really nice is that they added this little board with a dip switch for pull-up resistors. And it, typically, if you didn't have this, what you'd have to do is add some resistors in here to pull up the ALED and the WLED pins and since I have the Hall Effect crank sensor I need to pull that high as well. It looks like I need to turn on switches 1, 2, and 3. The fourth one is for the cam and I don't have that connected so I'll just leave it alone. And there we go, I just used a plastic zip tie to turn on those three switches. So I stuck a fuse in the fuse panel there, just a single 2 amp fuse to feed the micro squirt and the crank sensor. For now I just have some alligator clips feeding the main latch relay. And I'm going to stick with that for now until I get everything set up how I want it. And then I'll check for a crank signal and all that. I just have it plugged in here. There's the connection. And right now the wire is going up the windshield to a 232 converter to USB. So I just plugged it in. Hopefully it works. What you want to do is file new project. My car will call this 560 SEL. M117. You put a description in here, you know, uh, 1989 560 SEL M117 EFI conversion. But uh, really the pertinent information we have a Bosch 2.5 bar. Map, T map. I'll put a part number there. All right, good enough for now. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It needs to know the firmware we can hit detect. If everything all works out, we'll find it. There we go. MS2 Extra 3.4.4. See what the most recent one is. I'm not really sure. Probably not going to update it right now. Oop. Looks like 3.4.4 is the latest release. So that's good. So we're up to date. I wasn't going to update it right now anyhow, but good to see where we stand. Next, we will have a wideband sensor. Fahrenheit's good for me, sorry. All this is good, don't need expanded coolant temp. Successful. Communication there. Default dashboard is good with me. Okay. This is <laughs> funny. This is actually all looking pretty good. This is really amazing. 
I'll have to check the calibration on all this stuff, but throttle position's a little off, that's fine. Let's just uh, see if it moves when I open the throttle. Okay, got throttle position. But the first thing we need to go is just kind of go through each setting one by one. We're going to use a speed density. We could use some of these other ones, but speed density is most common. Squirts per engine cycle, two is good. We'll do alternating. This is a four stroke engine, not a two stroke or rotary. It is an eight cylinder. We have eight injectors. It's an even fire engine, meaning it fires every 90 degrees. The engine size, Wikipedia tells me the 5.5 .5 liter is 55, 47 cc's. We'll go with that. And injectors and in cc's per minute, 314. Point two untimed injection standard drivers that's good and we hit required fuel fifty five forty seven nine point nine air fuel that's good hit okay there's the base fuel that's assuming, I believe, 100% volumetric efficiency. You can click these little question marks. Uh, yeah, pulse without 100% V. So if it brought in 100% of that air in that cylinder and you wanted the 14.7 air fuel ratio, and based on the injector flow rate number, then that's how many milliseconds. And then everything will be based basically as a percentage of that. So this is good. We can hit burn. And then we have to cycle the power. So I will do that. It'll say offline. And we're back online. So that's everything under engine and sequential settings and general settings. I don't think we really, we do initial map reading. I'm gonna just do none for right now. Map and leave pretty much all this stuff alone for now. Speed density, I don't need a secondary table. And I definitely want to include the AFR target in the calculation, otherwise, the uh, VE table won't really be a real VE table. This is all good. Don't have to change anything here, so that's all good. Ignition settings. We have a toothed wheel. So I believe I used my ALEDS Part C. Hopefully that's configurable, or else that's going to be quite upsetting. Okay, so going high. Let's come back here. See the rising edge going high. That's fine. The 60 minus 2. I need to set this. I'm not sure what it is yet. I have to check it. It's a lot of dwell. Let's set 4. Set this to 2.5 for now. Okay. Burn this. Do the power cycle. It looks like I am stuck with ALED being D and WLED being C. Which is a bit unfortunate for me. I could either repin the connector, swap the two wires, remark my 
coils here. And I think I'll do that and see where it takes me. Because <clears throat> I put the shrink tube on the connector there, it's not really an option to repin it easily. Go ahead and calibrate the TPS. Current. Let me open the throttle all the way. There I have the throttle open the whole way. We get the current. Accept that. That's fine. That is just fine. Unlock the calibration tables. Okay, according to the manual, this is for a four wire sensor, but hopefully the resistances are the same. Coolant temp sensor, be Celsius, and we'll do I don't know. Negative twenty. Twenty ninety. That's as far as the table goes. This negative twenty is fifteen seven hundred. Says twenty is two point five. Ninety is two forty seven. Oh, the bias resistor. Oh, that is the internal bias resistor that's built into the thing. And twenty four ninety. Not sure why it doesn't just automatically populate it. Yeah, that's probably more accurate there actually because it's only about 70 degrees outside. So that's good. Got that. Air temperature sensor. We have 20, we'll do that 15 or 62, 15, 4, 62, 20 degrees Celsius, 2,500, and intake air temperature should not be that high, so I'm only going to go up to We'll just leave it at 90, I guess, which is 243. So pretty close. And if we go to designer mode, get all fancy here. So if I can find some free space to click, I don't know if it really matters. Do a new gauge. Just do a little analog gauge here. 
on this page. That's fine. That's full screen. Yeah. Properties. No, I don't need this. I need sensor inputs. And hold air temp. 73. Okay, so that's we got two things agreeing on each with each other at least, so that's something. And you have to make sure you exit designer mode or else it won't tell you when you need to burn or power cycle the ECU. And let's go ahead and check the map sensor since I have that as well. Okay, so I just uh Ran the fuel pump and set the pressure to 44 PSI. That's what the injectors are rated for. Then I went ahead and put a fuse in the ignition coil relay. I set this to uh, fire just coil A every 200 milliseconds. The dwell of two. So this is mostly to verify my ignition wiring so I just put two old plugs right there in the towers so if I did it correctly they should spark and I don't know if you can see that I don't want to get the camera too close but they are sparking and then what I want to do is Stop that. I'll switch it over to coil D. Verify that's correct. And then that should be everything. And that's correct. Go ahead and turn the fuel pump off. You can't hear the fuel pump because I pulled the, re the fuse that goes to the fuel pump. So that's pretty much everything. I need to get some vacuum lines. Um, but I might go ahead and try to start it. Um, I'll run these ignition wires now. And once I'm done with that, I'll input the number one tooth angle and get my timing light and verify the ignition timing is correct. And we'll go from there.